Welcome to Taleb's Optical Land Pond Protection. The purpose of this video is to introduce the pond protection features of the Optical Land system and provide instruction on its implementation and configuration in the Panorama EMS. The topics covered in this training module include an introduction to Taleb's Optical Land Pond Protection, Layer 1 installation considerations of the pond protection groups, and the process for creating pond protection groups in the EMS. Telab supports the G.984.1 Type B pond protection on all OLTs and ONTs. This allows the user to fully protect the pond side of the network in a cost-effective manner. Type B protection makes use of a splitter that allows for two inputs on the OLT side of the pond span. This gives both equipment and facility protection for the OLT side of the pond. Protection interfaces can be two ports on different pond cards within the same OLT or on two ports on different OLTs. This provides full equipment and facility redundancy to the splitter. In Telebs Pond Protection, one link is considered the primary and the second a standby pond link. The standby pond link does not communicate with the ONT group, but monitors for loss of signal on the pond. The standby pond will take over the group if it detects a loss of signal from the primary pond port. The two input fiber splitter allows both ponds to have the capability to inject light into the pond network and detect the traffic going to and from the other OLT. Failover times are less than five seconds It should be noted that the protection switching is revertive when using the QOIU7 pawn card. This means that when the primary link returns to service, the system will switch back after the wait to restore time has expired. The default wait to restore time is 60 seconds. This wait time avoids failover and revertive thrashing when the primary pawn is transitioning up and down rapidly. The OIU8 pawn card is non-revertive and will stay on the working pond port when the standby pond port function is restored. When configuring inter-OLT protection, you're required to enter a sync channel VLAN. This VLAN allows the two sides to exchange synchronization and state information to speed up the protection switching when a failure occurs. Any data VLAN that is present on the primary pond can be used for this purpose as long as there is a layer 2 connectivity between the two OLTs. The sync channel VLAN must be configured and uplink mapped on both OLTs. For best protection switching performance, it is recommended to spread the standby pond ports among pond cards. For example, if a pond card in slot 1 on an OLT, say OLT1, has four pond protection groups, then OLT1 slot 1 port 1 could be assigned to OLT2 slot 1 port 1. But the second port on OLT1 slot 1 should be matched with a different pond card on OLT2, for example, slot 2 port 1. By spreading the protection pawns across pond card slots, if a whole pond card were to fail, the switch time would remain constant, less than 5 seconds. It is important to plan carefully for a pond protection installation. There are two key points associated with the optical setup of a protected pond network. First, when using the QOIU7, the system relies on the primary optical link being able to take over control of the pond. This is accomplished in the optical domain by engineering the optical network such that the primary pond signal is 5 dB above that of the secondary pond signal. This allows the primary pond to drive the signal on the pond and take control. The typical way to accomplish this is via insertion of a 5 dB pad in the standby pond optical path. Also, a two input splitter typically adds 3 dB of loss to the optical budget. This combined 8 dB of loss must be planned for within the optical budget of the system being deployed. 
Installing an active secondary PON port on the two input splitter can cause disruption of service on the primary PON port before the PON protection group is configured. Therefore, it's a good idea to disable the secondary PON port in the EMS. Or wait until the PON protection group is configured before installing the secondary PON. Also, it is a good idea to label the primary and secondary PON ports in the EMS. This makes them easier to identify by other users. PON protection is configured in the protection group application. Select the OLT in the tree view that has the primary PON port for the group. Then launch the application. In the application, Select the Create icon to create a new protection group. In the Create Protection Group interface, select a name for the group. Identify the primary PON port for the group by selecting the OLT TID and the PON address for the primary PON port. Then select the OLT and PON port for the secondary PON in the group. If the primary and secondary PON ports reside on two different OLTs, a sync channel VLAN must be established. The VLAN must be created and mapped on both OLTs prior to PON protection group configuration. Once the group is entered, select Apply to save the PON protection group. Once the PON protection group has been configured, connect and enable the secondary PON port. The status of the PON protection group should be normal with no outstanding alarms. After the configuration is complete, the PON protection group can be tested. First, pull the primary fiber or disable the primary PON port from the EMS. Verify that all ONTs appear on the secondary PON. The secondary PON should have an alarm indicating PON on Protect. If traffic can be verified, do so. Traffic should be restored during a switch in less than 5 seconds. The Protection Group operating status should show on Protect. After a few minutes, switch the PON back by restoring the primary PON interface. Traffic will revert back to the primary PON after the prescribed wait time. Verify traffic is restored and that alarms have cleared. The reversion process should also cause less than a 5 second traffic interruption. This concludes the module Telabs Optical LAN PON Protection. In this video, we have discussed an introduction to Telabs Optical LAN PON Protection, Layer 1 installation considerations of the PON Protection Group, and the process for creating PON Protection Groups in the EMS.